Have you ever wanted to create an app on the blockchain but had no idea where to even start? Well, Zbyte can help, and now the company's token is listed on an official crypto exchange. With me is co-founder of Zbyte, Nitin Kumar. Great to have you back. I'm happy to be here, yeah. Jane. <laughs> so let's start, just lay the groundwork. What is Zbyte? The token is Dplat. Kind of explain all of the business and how this works. So Zbyte is now an open source platform. It's a decentralized platform and it's owned by the community. The process of decentralization is on. It's basically solving four problems. If you look at Electric Capital's report, there's only 23,000 Web3 developers. But the DApp market is supposed to go to 67 billion by 2027. Where are these developers gonna come from? So we gotta get more Web2 developers on uh, to the platform and help them retool them, without retooling themselves, kind of get familiar with Web3. So wallet, easy, easy wallet experience, you've got drag and drop low code, no code, they can build the apps very seamlessly and also monetize them on our app store. Yeah, I mean, I know there's huge demand for some of these blockchain developers. So this is a problem that you're solving, correct? Yeah, we call ourselves that we are solving the developer scarcity. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, who uses Dplat? So Dplat is used by a number of different constituents. One is that when developers come and build, that's the primary community for uh, community and the builders. They are the primary users of the, uh, of the decentralized platform. Other than that, there are entities launching their business on it. There's a services company called Genovatic. There's uh, Zblocks, which is catering to enterprises and uh, looking at consumer engagement. There's a new fashion tech company called The F Word. And the ecosystem continues to grow. And then explain the token. How does it work? What does it do? So the token is pure utility and it is solving the uh, liquidity problem for the developer if they have to pay the fee in the Dplat token. Okay. And it's a sovereign currency of the decentralized platform. In which case, what happens is if a developer wants to build, they don't have to buy all the layer one tokens and kind of uh, deal with all that. Instead, they can just deal with the native token and kind of build and play the, pay the gas fee. Okay, and then tell me about some real world use cases. How have you helped people build on the blockchain? Excellent question. <clears throat> so blockchain's, blockchain's adoption has been fraught with complexity. Mm -hmm. People don't want crypto on their balance sheets. People don't want to sort of have wallets. They don't want to remember the keywords. So we made that easy. And in some ways we had that easy button to transition from Web2 to Web3. So there are a multitude of use cases. The biggest one is in the marketing side when you use NFT uh, to engage consumers connected to the wallet because NFT is non-fungible. Uh, it's like your fingerprint. Mm. And uh, a brand can seamlessly engage with the consumer. The other one that we're looking at is tokenization of assets. Uh, there are use cases uh, built <clears throat> alongside of tracking and tracing and supply chain. And there's a lot of demand from developers who are obviously more creative than set of individuals and founders behind the deep lab. So as the community takes over, there's more creativity coming in. The fashion tech company was a byproduct of that. Mm -hmm. And what are is the ecosystem? You explained the fashion tech company. Talk to me about the whole ecosystem. So the ecosystem comes in about three or four flavors, right? One is the community of developers, which is building. We've got a community of about 50,000 and growing right now. And there's real-time transactions that are happening on the deep lot. Uh, the second piece of the ecosystem is the layer ones. Obviously, we work with uh, people, big chains like Avalanche and Polygon, who are more established. There's some excitement about new kids on the block and the new blockchains like PowerChain. And then the third piece of it is uh, people who are building entities on it. As I mentioned, Genovatics is helping commercialize the DPLAT into enterprises, customizing use case that's purely professional services. We have got uh, the uh, Zblocks people who are solving the consumer engagement and marketing, so there's very large transactions coming from there. And the newest kid on the block is the F word, which is helping fashion creators kind of do on canvas and off canvas features. Prior to this, the creators had no record of what they were creating and how these things are monetized and all of that. Blockchain helps them. And seamlessly using generative AI and uh, uh, the low code, no code platform, uh, they're able to monetize, create quickly and monetize quickly. Yeah, no, I was taking a look at the website and noticed AI was being incorporated now. And so let's just, let's talk about the crypto market. I mean, it seems like an exciting year. We're just starting 2024. How do you see things overall? So the crypto market is uh, obviously the cycle's changing, driven by the Bitcoin halving. Institutional adoption is big. Mm -hmm. uh, there was always uh, certain bad actors have been fleshed out of the ecosystem as well. 
So I think the market's getting more savvy that you just can't simply launch a token and say, oh, well, speculate here, right? Uh, if you look at the successful ones like Ethereum, there's actually free cash flow that comes on it. So any token that has free cash flow and adoption is going to survive. Legacy tokens are hanging out there. Let's see what happens to them. But the winners and losers are clear. Those who have good utility and cash flow lands on it. And then all the um, real world assets is a big narrative. Blockchain gaming is a big narrative. Uh, the new uh, layer one protocols, PowerChain, for example, is an interesting one. You can develop at very, very low fee. Uh, you don't really need smart contracts to write to the blockchain. You can use them or not. And then you can code in any programming languages that you want. So that vision also kind of aligns with ours to sort of bring more Web2 and more people into that. So we're excited about them. Then the actual battlefield is going to be layer two. If you remember the last bull cycle, it was all about layer one. I think layer one is saturated unless there is disruptive innovation. Incremental innovation is not going to help. So it's all going to be layer two now. Um, there's a lot happening even in the venture capital world. People are looking at it very seriously. But again, tokens have to have fundamentals, adoption, and cash flow. Uh, accrued on the protocol. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your success so far. I know it's been a lot of hard work, and um, so hopefully great things to come for z -Bike. Yeah, thank you, Jane. Lots of hard work in and lots more hard work to do. <laughs> Still ahead. Thanks, Nishan. Yeah, thank you.